Hello, everyone. Um, so before this, we had a question up on screen that was asking you, you know, what makes up your digital identity. Um, so I actually have a personal story from that. Uh, when I first added Yanjin on Instagram, even though I've worked with her for like more than a year, I had no idea she likes traveling. And I realized she's actually a very adventurous traveler. Um, and myself, my roommate, uh, when she first saw my Facebook account and added me as a friend before we became roommates, she thought to herself, she will never be friends with me because I looked very professional in my online life. And she was like, I will never be friends with her. But now we're best friends. So our <laughs> online digital lives say a lot about us, but I hope you guys have some personal stories that you can relate to when it comes to that stuff too. Mm -hmm. So today, we're talking about building identity and social experiences for virtual reality. But what we're really here to talk about is people. How do people express themselves both online and in real life? And also, how can you empower people to truly be themselves in social VR? My name is Mahin Suhail, and I am fascinated by the intersection of people, stories, and virtual spaces. My name is Yan Jing Long, and I study user behaviors in social VR. So in online digital spaces, identity systems are responsible for building trust between the user and the system. A weak identity system will easily break that trust. So we believe that carefully built identity systems can really help enable a safe, meaningful social space. Through our user research and design explorations, we have identified four tenants for a strong identity system. Today, we're going to walk you through all four of them, and we're going to provide examples and research that backs them up. But before we tell you about how people think about their own identity, it's only fair that we tell you a bit about our own. I grew up in four different countries, in eight different cities, and never lived in the same place for more than four years. Needless to say, I grew up super confused. How do you even begin to explain British, Pakistani, American, Canadian in one word? You kind of can't. So what that meant was that because I grew up in so many places, I believed that I could never truly be myself. At um, at work, I chose to be very ambitious and serious. Uh, when I was with my friends, I was always talking about my hobbies and things that I'm really fascinated by, like starting a podcast. And at home, I was a goofball. I was the baby, the kid of the house, right? And as I grew older, these identities were further fragmented into my online social personas. On Twitter, I love ranting about the Emmys or Grammys or Super Bowl or whatever's going on. On LinkedIn, I'm very professional. I'm only posting things relevant to my career. Uh, on Instagram, it looks like I'm traveling all the time. <laughs> and when I want to be an elvish warrior princess, I go online and I play video games. But the truth is that this is not just unique to me. We're all like this. We all have these different identities of us. We're all fragmented in those ways. But it doesn't mean that identity is, our identity is, is complicated or that we're not the one person. It just means that identity is more complicated than we thought it to be, even though we're that one same person. I relate to Mahin's story a lot because I also lived in different countries. But like she said, this is not just our personal experiences or simply because we lived in different countries while we grew up. This is actually the case for everyone. The concept of self is a classic concept and has also been studied in social psychology for over 100 years. Psychologists have found that everyone's identity is complicated and has three main traits. It's always multifaceted and is highly dependent on our social context and actually evolves over time as we gain more experiences in our life. So with this background in mind, we're now going to walk you through the four tenets of a strong identity system in social VR that actually accommodates the sophistication of our identities. First, a strong identity system should really be expressive that allows people to express themselves freely and truly in social VR. Many people may think that name is the most important component of our identity, as it's always shown up on our ID cards. However, our identity and research has shown that our identity is much more than that. Think about your personality, your hobbies, your friends and family, your hometown, your work, and even how you look. These are all very important parts of your identity. And in many ways, they speak much louder than the name that you were given. 
So in VR, we can design features and different tools to help people express the different aspects of their uh, complicated identity. For example, through avatars. So Oculus Avatars provides a variety of appearance assets, so people can actually build up like an avatar th that they like and they want to embody. We're also mindful of this as we're building the next generation of avatars in Facebook Horizon. Clothing and accessories are also great for self-expression. Here's a great example from Dance Central. It provides various options for people to customize their avatars and express their unique style and their identity. Have you ever wondered why tech workers all love their t-shirts so much? <laughs> How would you feel if one day you went to work and wore a, a suit and tie? People are highly aware of their surrounding environments. They want, and most of the time, they want to fit in with the context. So through our research with VR users, we actually revealed the same. People told us that they actually want their avatar to also fit the style of other avatars in the same environment. More importantly, they want to be able to change their avatar outfit as they go to different places in VR and they go do different things in VR. For example, we talked to Alex, who's a, who's a sports fan, and he really enjoys like, watching sports games with his friends in VR over the weekend. He's not necessarily into fashion in any way, but he told us he definitely wants to dress his avatar with a team jersey when he watches games with his friends in VR. So holidays and the cultural moments are also integral parts of our identity and our life. These are special occasions that we can really take the chance to help people celebrate these important moments in their life and also help them find other people who share similar cultural uh, backgrounds. So for example, last year, Oculus avatars provided Halloween outfits so people can really celebrate this fun holiday together in VR. But besides appearance and the clothing of avatars, there are so many other features in VR that we can build to help people further express themselves. So in addition to clothing, as Yanjin said, facial expressions play a big role in how we express ourselves. Think about in the real world when you're frowning, when you're sad, when you're happy, when you're laughing. How you express yourself really helps you build relationships with other people. If you don't have that, how will either person know what you're feeling or even what you're saying, how it's coming off as? So as we're building these avatars and the future of these avatar systems, especially in Facebook Horizon, we're really mindful of how we're building these expressions and these tools for users to learn. In addition to facial expressions, body language is very important. There's a coworker of mine who's super tall and, uh, and he has a very um, distinct uh, body language when he's walking and so when he comes to work, I can spot him from really far away because I know it's him. And so body language says a lot about who you are, right? But in VR, I mean, we're still a bit ways off from replicating that exact, exact precision of body language. But what we can do in the meantime is think about avatar to avatar interactions. How can we, can we enable people to do really delightful things like a fist bump, a high five, something that can enable that interaction of when in the real world you're hugging someone when they're sad, how can we do that in VR? We find that when people do high fives or fist bump each other and these delightful, magical things come out, uh, it really, really makes the experience a lot more meaningful Then They sometimes even forget about the experiences they're playing and just want to high five one another. Other than your body language and your facial expressions, identity is also expressed by your environment. For example, I have a lot of coffee cups on my desk at work and that says a lot about me, right? So think about in your sp social space, in your environments, how are you decorating it? How are you enabling people to express them, their interests in these spaces? So in Oculus Home, for example, if you love playing video games, you can put an arcade machine there. If you love plants, you can start decorating it with plants. How are you enabling people to express their interest in these places? And if you're not around to physically express yourself, we should be learning from social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, places that have given profiles to connect asynchronously when you're not there to express yourself. 
So for example, in Facebook Horizon, if you make worlds, if you make creations, you're able to show that on your profile so that when someone visits your profile when you're not there, they can learn that you are a creator, that you love making worlds. And not just that, but they can learn about what kind of objects you love making. In addition to being expressive, a strong identity system should also be informative. So from our research with Oculus users, we've learned that people are not yet engaged in social interactions in VR. People don't know what social in VR even means. People are mostly used to playing video games in VR. So when they first go into a social VR experience, it's not the best experience because they're very confused by when they meet another person and when that person can say their username or when that person can start identifying them. It's because of these reasons that we need to start educating people what social in VR actually means and make sure that that trust between the user and the system is built so that they can have a safe experience. So one way to help strengthen people's awareness of their own, own identity is that every time they come back into the VR experience, remind them who they are. Think about in the real world. You grew up with this one identity that you are. You know your name, you know what you look like. Every day when you leave your house, you look into a mirror, you know what you look like. But in VR, you're embodying a new character. You're embodying a new username. You have no idea and you don't have a memory of what that is. So if we're creating these recognition patterns and reminding people of who they are, if something feels off, they can go into their settings and change it. This way they have control over their own situation. In addition to being informative, a strong identity system should also be simple. So what does simple mean in this context? Let me share a story with you about our user Abigail. Abigail lives in Dallas, Texas. Her family actually just moved back to Dallas earlier this year from Minnesota. So she's very busy, busy adjusting to her new life, especially with two young kids. She received an Oculus Go last Christmas as a gift. And since then, she has been enjoying the VR experience so much because it just feels like an escape from her everyday routine, even just for a few minutes a day. Therefore, when we talked to her, Abigail told us she really wants her VR experiences to be easy, simple to manage. Mm. She doesn't like the idea that she has to manage like, or keep track of multiple uh, usernames and avatars and even profile photos. So just as in Abigail's example, we can all end up having multiple avatars, profile photos, and username in different apps in VR at this point. And it can, it can become really hard to keep track of how you actually show up to different people or in different apps. So it's important for us to think about how do users behave or connect with other people outside of that particular app that you're building? Can you leverage on some platform features such as the profile photos to create simplicity and also help people easier, make it easier for people to recognize their friends in your app? We also know that typing is hard in VR and the onboarding, the first few minutes in a, in a new app, are usually the most critical, especially for less experienced VR users. So we want to get them into the experience really fast. So again, consider how you may leverage the platform level identity information. Maybe sometimes, uh, maybe consider auto-populating some of the identity information to really create a seamless transition from the platform to your app and really get people into your exciting experience directly and much faster. So beyond being simple, a strong identity system also needs to be flexible. Flexible in terms of that we are actually, we want to give users control over when and who to share their personal information with. So imagine that you're at a party. There are different people at the party and they may all know part of, uh, they may all know some information about you. And that's usually depend on your relationship with that person and how comfortable you are with sharing that information. You may have strangers there that you just met and exchanged your name with, but you may also have close friends there that you actually feel pretty comfortable sharing and they know a lot about you. Here's another story about our user, Kelly. She works at a university in North Carolina and she's very interested in purchasing a new VR headset. She's really excited about exploring different things that she can do in VR especially things that she's too shy to do in her real life. For example, taking a dance class. 
but she also told us that she has concerns about disclosing her information to strangers in VR. She would feel much more comfortable if she could have control over when to share that information with people she trusts. So as we can see that in real life, people really have this mental model that they can progressively disclose their personal information as they build up trust with different people. So how can we replicate that in our products? Many social media platforms, such as Facebook, has already done so. We're all very familiar with the, profile for, with the profiles in Facebook. And as you can see that, it looks different to your non-friends and your Facebook friends. You won't be able to see my personal information like my school, my hometown, or my birthday until you become friends with me. We can also replicate the same model in VR, which will really make people feel more comfortable and safe entering a new social space at the first place. So just to sum up, a strong identity system should really be expressive, informative, simple, and flexible. We want to empower people to really express the, their true self in VR, but also we want to make sure that they have control over their identities. In addition to these four tenets, there are a few other things to keep in mind as you build these identity systems. For example, what kind of information are you asking your users? It's really important that when you're asking people for information, you ask yourself, do you really need this information? Do you really need to know the gender of your user? Do you really need to know where they live? Users these days are more mindful about the information that they're actually sharing with, with the apps that they're using. When, when it comes to building trust with users, we find that this is the most critical point to build that trust. It's a lot easier to lose trust than it is to build it back up. And so you have to think about it from the beginning. Yesterday at OC6, at the Women in VR User Research, we had Eifer, who's right here, and Tara Franz talk about the challenges around harassment in VR. We also had a session today about how we can create safe spaces and design those safe spaces to increase um, people's trust and comfort in these social spaces. So when it comes to identity, it's really important we think about what information are people giving up. Will a woman really feel give it safe giving up her identity at all times? Maybe she wants to be more neutral in some spaces as she's trying to understand the space and trying to understand what she feels most comfortable with. So it's really important to think about how can we allow people to feel both safe and express themselves in the space at the same time. This balance of safety and self-expression is really critical to nailing because once you nail it, you can create communities and enable people to thrive and connect with one another. In our own journey of making self-expression tools, it's been so inspiring to see how people express themselves in our spaces. Years ago, when we uh, launched Facebook Spaces in beta, we saw people use self-expression tools in the most fun ways. We saw people cutting out images and making t-shirts out of it. We saw people making podcasts in Facebook Spaces. We saw architecture professors showing 360 photos of architecture in Italy and teaching people during live streams. These are all self-expression tools. And so we're really excited to see the worlds that you build and how people express themselves in these spaces, and we can't wait to try them. Thank you. Um, we're not taking questions right now, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to tweet at us or find us outside. Thank you. Thank you.